Good uh, <clears throat> morning. It's Sunday. Blessed Sunday. And I wanted to do a real quick video um, for everybody. I want everyone to understand that we are in a spiritual war. It's evident to people like me who have a knowledge of what is happening behind the face of your state. And here's a simple breakdown on this. We are a faith-based country. Our money is based on our full faith and credit. So the value of the money that is running all over the world that pays for all things uh, in the greenback oil-based economy is backed by our faith and our faith that founded this country is of a Christian Orthodox tendency we are the America the American construct is rooted from the Eastern Orthodox Church that is the true church of Christ and we are the only country west of Israel current position uh, that are of the Eastern Orthodox faith all of the countries that we came from are controlled well we are too but have been controlled for many many years by the Western heretical church which is the Church of Satan now you can accept this or not you can accept that the Roman Catholic Church is a heretical church or not I can prove to you that it's a church of Satan and it is the heretical church and it's the false God and it's the Antichrist as far as I can tell uh, for a biblical reference it currently controls all of the banking as the head vicar of Christ quote unquote, the, the self-professed vicar of Christ, who is regulating the utilization of our jubilee and our access to it that we're owed by God, is being controlled by the Vatican and the heretical Pope and the heretical Jesuits, who are uh, in a variety of forms right now. Jesuits run around the world, if you've read the Jesuit Oath, and smash babies' heads in and rape women and murder all those who will not follow the fact that the Pope is the Vicar of Christ. So anybody who is of the Eastern Orthodox faith, the true mystical believers of the body of Christ, and the Trinity of the hypostatic union are enemies of the Pope and his Jesuits those Jesuits include the Islamic jihadists they're just Jesuits they act just like them they behave just like them they pretty much have the same oath openly they're just calling their God Allah well if you know anything about Islam you know that the Pope created Islam so Islam is just another face of a Je Jesuit insurgents and jihad. So we're surrounded by Pope agents. We are surrounded by the heretical, satanic, Roman Catholic churches agents. We have Islamicist jihadists infiltrating our borders. And in the same hand, you have the commie fascist servant esquires undermining on the backside of our government the powers of our presidency in the executive branch to protect us from those jihadists so they're the ground insurgents the, the Islamicists and these ISIS and all these terrorist organizations they're created to attack us on the ground and then they're being protected and perpetuated and facilitated behind the scenes within our own instruments of state by esquires who are cooing our government. 
I'm not saying it's all Esquires, but if you're an Esquire, you are party to a jihadist Jesuit order of Satan worship worshipers who are following the false god, the Pope, who professes to be the king of the world and all the all the churches. If you're anything if you're, if you're knowledgeable at all in Christian tendency, you know that that defines Lucifer. Okay? Revelations tells you. Revelations 11 and 12. I, th I think 12 speaks. Uh, it's 11, I think, that speaks to the dragon. The dragon in Revelations makes war against the woe to eat the sons of men. When you have people running around smashing babies' heads up against the wall because they are the progeny of devout Christians, I'm pretty sure that's a dragon boy act. Okay? That's Lucifer. Those are followers of Lucifer. So if you're an Islamicist, if you are a Muslim of the Islamic faith, I'm going to tell you that your religion is, was founded by a radical church that uh, pretty much operates and acts and professes uh, to be pretty much Lucifer, uh, the king of kings on earth. Strangely enough, it's about a thousand years now. 2054 would be a thousand year reign of a false god. So we're on the cusp where um, America is confused because it has a coup from within its bowels where men are doing and women in their positions of power of esquire are openly creating fraudulent instruments they are they have cooed our government and control the government and within that control they are allowing their own members within their unions to create fraudulent documents uh, in commerce bonds uh, instruments that are backed with the full faith and credit of the people by seal pursuant to title 28 1738 and 1738 capital A not little a. Totally, it, they, they're not under the same act they specifically create two different sections I don't really know if there's another section in title 28 where they do that where they create like a 1605 and then a 1605 big A I don't they have 1605 little a so this is a specific circumstance where it states that all acts of the legislature, all acts of the judiciary and clerks, basically administrative officers, that operate and produce instruments under signature and seal that they are backed by the full faith and credit. And that's in 1738. In 1738a, it extends this authority, this power, this conveyance of public debt, okay, public surety, to acts that affect the conveyance of children under Title IV. Anything related to the termination of substantial rights or the states taking cognizance over the jurisdiction of children has its own separate section that says that those acts are covered by the full faith and credit clause of the Constitution. So it means that all those acts under signature and seal, those orders where administrative officers in the bankruptcy of the United States who are being operated by cooed, a cooing unions are creating documents that are unlawful uh, under the constructs of the Uniform Commercial Code. They are fraudulent bonds. They are fraudulent uh, motions because they are operating in fraud, because they're conveying children as things using the 14th Amendment United States surety that a uh, citizen, uh, the 14th Amendment all capital dog Latin dead, civilly dead instrument. They're treating the children as pieces of paper 
and waiving all of the flesh and blood rights. And they're doing this to, to adults, too, in, in the gross amount of human trafficking that is happening in the United States. But I want to focus on children and the law, because if your law is being controlled by foreign, people who are foreign to you, who don't believe like you, who don't have the same faith tenets as you, who don't believe in our law, who actually are defrauding us by, on the face, acting in one way, and then on the backside, completely operating in constructor fraud in antithesis of that. If you have someone doing that to your government, who in the, it, within those powers, those fraudulent powers are exercising, they are conveying your children and stealing them and trafficking them. You've lost your government. You've lost control of your government. And you've lost control of your society, and in this case, the world, in a matter of respect. We're not controlling the world. They are creating fraudulent instruments and, and putting and treating children and humans as things. This is the necromancy, if you've ever heard me speak uh, personally in a crowd when I do... Um, teachings and stuff like that or sermons or just exposés on what I know I speak of necromancy and I also I think speak about it on my Facebook page and sometimes probably when I do interviews necromancy is the cultish activity where you put you put the spirit of something into a thing and the purpose of necromancy is to control the living with the, the thing. So what they've done is, is they've necromanced your and I spirituality and put it into a piece of paper. And they actually are doing this through what they perceive as magic. I don't know if any of you all know this, but when you're born on the certificate of live birth, they will put your footprint and your foot print is put on that before it's put onto the land. That print is called a soul plate. Okay. And I, I believe it's called S-O-L-E, but you know there's always the attorning of the word because it's the sound in magic, not the spelling per chance necessarily. And they use the spelling uh, and the capitalization dog Latin versus uh, lowercase to affect their magic. So in the act of putting your footprint on the piece of paper, they believe that they're embodying your soul into that instrument. And then they, they then create another instrument. They, they hold, this is actually the deed of your landing. But you don't ever really land. You're contracted by your soul print on a piece of paper as an infant before you ever put your foot on the land. So they take you out of your mother, who is you were anchored to by the umbilical cord. They clip it, and they put your footprint as a soul plate, soul print, on a piece of paper. And in that act, they magically, in their mind, own you. They then take that necromanced instrument and create a birth certificate. And they keep the original title and stick it in a place in New the York. And then they take the certificate of live birth New and, York. and then the birth certificate thereafter. And the birth certificate's kind of like the, the title you get from the state when you don't own the car. Well, you never own the car. But it's even further removed. It's that white piece of paper you get when there's a lien holder. So, because the same thing happens with the car car is made a thing and they uh, create a real title the person who made it GM makes a title and they surrender that title to the state the state then gives gives a warranty deed to the dealership to give you and then you go get a loan on that warranty deed and you go to the state and you license it, put it into commerce, and, and you owe money, so they give you the white title. 
You're you're like two steps removed from ownership of anything, even though you're paying for it. And you're not even paying the manufacturer, the people who actually made it with their hands. You're not creating you're not paying the creators, you're paying the state. So the state is confiscating all of our properties, including our children, as property. And in common law, your children actually are your property because you made them. Okay? There's a there's an age of ascension where they have free will of their own, but up until that point, you're supposed to protect them as the property you made, and they are actually deemed uh, subjects of the estate. They are things that you create from your bond with your wife in God. Now, the state has embedded itself into all those godly faith-based constructs. They've supplanted the marriage bond with the uh, marriage license, a marriage bond used to be uh, a male would have to have money and produce an, an insurance policy so that if he went off to war and did his little crazy thing that men would do back then, the woman and the child would have a vestment to live on. And that was a, that was a requirement that the father usually required. That he, if he's going to convey his child, his daughter, who is the tr who can prove the lineage of his children, even though you know she has his name, the woman can prove that that child's her. The man cannot. So if the father is going to give his daughter in matrimony under God to another man, he wants to ensure that that woman and the children and that the estate created there under is insured in case the one who would be going out into the world and affecting commerce, because they were the only ones at the time that really could do that openly, the men, uh, would be cared for and have a dowry of sorts. That concept of private surety was taken over by the state with the marriage license. So you have a state that has embedded itself in all that we're doing, okay? And it's taken it over. And in the process of doing that, we thought, oh, that's great, you know, that, that, that we've, we've arrived, right? We can... Uh, we can um, relax, we don't have to provide all the surety all the time, and, and the state's going to be have our back, and the state's going to take care of us, and all these things, right? But that's not, that's not what we really got. Uh, what ended up happening is, is the state used that power to enslave us, because the state is in coup. Now, the instruments of state are not the problem. They're they're functioning and doing what they're supposed to be doing. And in fact, if we didn't have these criminal elements within our society, we wouldn't have the problems that we have. Because when you understand what's truly going on, you'll understand that they are actually manipulating from on high war, poverty, disparity, drugs, the the, the insurgence of social ills, um, class systems, these are all being created and perpetuated by the masters of the state. And they do this so that they can create these little teats, these little minnowing channels where they can steal our wealth. We see that in the foreclosures. We see that in the egregious uh, banking uh, law violations. We see that um, in uh, getting young men to sign up to be state Hessians to go to other countries as uh, Hessian soldiers getting paid as mercenaries to murder and mayhem in foreign lands. This is not, that's not acts of a republic. That's acts of a totalitarian regime. Uh, mostly because of the manner of fact, you sign a contract. People who enter the military sign a contract, which basically waives all their rights to their flesh and their body. And they are, um, you know, vowing to do something and to defend the Constitution, the problem is they don't realize uh, 
what constitution they're defending and who's running the corporate constitution. So I've come to know and can prove that behind the scenes the attorneys do whatever they want to do. They are violating both constitutions. They're violating federal statute. They're violating state statutes. They're violating their own internal policies and procedures uh, that they've instituted in all of their courts. They're not following anything. And they are currently conveying children as things, necromanced pieces of paper between states, and which is in violation of the law, uh, without the protections and circumventing the federal instruments. So now we have states creating interstate commerce with children as property. And uh, they want to be able to transact children from state to state because if a child is in Arizona they want to be able to or excuse me if the child is in Missouri they want to be able to truck that child through Oklahoma and Texas and into the border and or or north uh, go from Kentucky to Ohio uh, to Toledo and across the border into Canada they want they need to have the capacity to truck children with their names not even on the instruments now they hide the names on these pleadings now the children are just initials. And they try to say it's for the safety and security of the child. No, it's not. It's for their ability to actually obfuscate the actual identity of the child that they've stolen. In this situation with the POTUS, okay, uh, him trying to control the borders from letting jihadists come in who will rape, murder, and mayhem our children, because they will. I'm not saying all of them. I'm not saying that all immigrants are that. But in those immigrants, there are people who have been deliberately asked to come in here, orchestrated to come in here by our own coup within our government. The last uh, presidential administration, for example, to come in here and undermine our way of life, our faith. They've done. They're they're challenging what he's doing with trying to control the international border of our country to try to dissolve that boundary of law so that they can then, because if they can reach, you have to think, if they can reach over our boundaries and grab a child that is not a citizen of the United States and bring them in and have no one controlling that boundary, having remove that power from the executive branch unlawfully in coup because that is what is going on in that respect is a coup okay. when they do that they want to be they want to dissolve the executive power to control that border so you have to understand what the attorneys these communist fascist satan worshiping attorneys are doing is trying to make it so they can traffic our children and people between countries and co country borders and interstate all over the world as little instruments of things and no one no one can control them no one will have the authority to stop them that's what they want because they're just they're just the slave traders for the Roman Empire. Rome was built on slaves. It's still built on slaves. The entire banking structure that the Holy Roman Catholic Church is the head vicar of is a slave trading company. That's all they are. And it's a slave trading company that is masking a very, very, very evil aspect of humanity. Actually, I don't think it's an aspect of humanity. They're hiding a very big evil from us all. They are servants to some very evil people who sacrifice our children, who cultivate them from children, monarch them, torture them to become perfect little servants to their own servants uh, as rewards. You have to pay people somehow whenever you're 
operating in hypothecation. So you have a bunch of necromancers running your world who are abusing negotiable instrument laws, defrauding negotiable instrument laws that are backed by the full faith and credit of the American people. Those instruments that that they've created in violation of those laws are junk bonds and they're fraud. And when brought forth will collapse the world economies if not done properly. Now, whether it's done properly is upon them. But I don't necessarily know how you fix an entire world banking structure that's based on slave trading necromancy instruments created in fraud um, that's a pretty dicey circumstance situation but that's what has to happen because the systems that are currently going on are evil they are heretical they're against our belief systems they're against our law so I just I want people to understand that I don't think that people really comprehend the totality of the fact that you have the world government system is structured on evolved built evolved from the ultimate purpose of the trafficking of our children of harvesting our children for their use vassals these are these are law constructs that are thousands of years old and Yeshua uh, you know threw down the gauntlet and said we won't serve your king your manly kings your worldly kings and that's what we're being forced to do in fraud that's actually what we're doing we're actually serving worldly kings as vassals and slaves by allowing the current system of banking and governance to do what it's doing so if you're in government and this is new to you you need to be doing everything in your power to ensure that the laws that are there are being followed because it's not that the laws aren't there they actually have this great facade where they have all these laws that say all these things they're not following them the judiciary is not following them whatever you want to call that instrument it's not a judiciary anymore it's just a big foreign racketeering criminal enterprise that's trafficking in babies through necromancy magic pieces of paper and you gotta wonder about a group of people who think that necromancy and I mean they've actually you know their necromancy works they create the, the thing and then they impose military um, tyranny upon us I don't know if anyone's seen the movie by called Riddick um, with Vin Diesel I think and he's dealing with these necromancers who are this this universal you know horrible fascist um, monolithic military empire where there's a they go they they traverse the hither and the nether and, and there's actually a point in that movie where this priest who was converted to their necromancy religion because it's a military cult okay that's what we have we have a militarized magic satanic cult running the world okay which is what this movie's about except they're running the universe they go to a planet if you won't kneel down to them they just murder you all sound familiar he basically the goal of their religion is to cleanse this reality to send servants to the other reality and to empty this reality to serve that reality so to empty heaven to serve hell to empty free will God fearing people to serve Satan in slavery and death and contract with Lucifer so I, I speak a lot about the particularities and the actual functioning of the law and what the law is in, in its physical construct, in the flesh, the papers and stuff. But there is an overseeing esoteric 
war going on here that we've been at war on for thousands of years that Yeshua brings forth uh, with this esoteric construct of a greater father, greater father mother actually. He did. They left the mother out when they stole the religion and created the heretical church. They kicked the woman out. And that tells you it's the church of Lucifer because Lucifer could not tolerate and could not recognize the woman as in equal parity to him, more or less, having God having and the God Father having a God Mother, the Creator. So these people are nihilists that are unwilling to accept that women uh, have a central role in our creationism. And I guess think that men who have never created anything from birth or life, they've, they've taken things, you know, I like, this is, people don't realize, this is necromancy, okay? This is fallen angel necromancy, fallen angel uh, tech necromancy. Th this has this kind of a spirit to it, and it controls all people. It monitors people now. This is a necromancy tool. They have put, given a controlling spiritual aspect to this. Okay. This is man-made. Plants, birds, and bees are woman-made, <laughs> being of the female the, the, the female entity, the creation entity. The male deity can only embody creationism in things. And that's how you know that we're being controlled by a male-dominated cultish construct that wars against women and babies. That is the Roman Catholic Church. Uh, I've never met the Pope. I don't know if I ever will. I've communicated uh, via writing with the Pope. Um, I've noticed the Pope several times. Um, some of the, the last notice I sent him was very poignant in, def in defaulting the Roman Catholic Church for what Yeshua, uh, you know, Moses brought the law, Jesus brought the grace. So that's first notice, second notice. I've defaulted the Pope. They're still doing the same thing they were doing 2,000 years ago. After I defaulted the Pope and the Vatican in Vienna, they stopped uh, refusing, or they stopped accepting my communications. And so I figured it was a pretty poignant uh, instrument of law that I provided to him. And, and that instrument was, is actually sitting in the District of Columbia in two courts right now. So, you know, I know that I talk about the actual practical, physical aspect of things, but there's an esoteric uh, concept going on here, a spiritual war, and that's where it's really rooted. And so I need everyone to really kind of focus on that because it's that faith-based aspect of all of these, you know, physical instruments, these pieces of paper they've created with their necromancy magic that defines whether those pieces of paper have any worth. And so I need everyone to wake up to the faith aspect and to avert and assert that they don't have faith in a nihilistic, satanic, necromancy, uh, warring, um, you know, cult of men that want to traffic children. We need to stop putting our faith in a government, in instruments of state that are doing that. And we need to start being very vocal about it. And if it means having to uh, collapse the pieces of paper that are supported by that, that's what we'll have to do. It's, it's actually up to them. Um, they have the power to not collapse it by correcting their course. They've been told that. They've been shown by me and Rit how they can correct their course and maintain the full faith. So it's totally in their hands. But if they continue these prevailing uh, principalities, the four beasts, to operate the way they are, I really don't see a positive end result. Uh, in the long term, there will be, but there will be some very, very, very hard times for the world in general until we cleanse the world of these people. So I wanted to speak today on a Sunday about that in the full faith and credit of the American people. 
because the American people are not United States citizens. That's that's in case law. We are not things. We are not a 14th Amendment all capital thing. And we need to start stepping back from that and taking control from of that instrument as executors, which we have the right to do. Our government has a proxy of that. But if you all don't even realize you that you're not a thing, that there is this instrument of law that's a 14th Amendment all capital thing, that is an instrument of necromancy that is now in control uh, by people and, and brought forth in creation. I mean, only the evil people would think these things. So, so their service to the to the balance of nature, because even Lucifer is a servant of God, is to have uh, been driven by their malfeasance and evil and reprobate uh, publican mindsets to create such a, a system. Um, that's the capita. So they, they brought the formation of the capita by their evil and greed and disgusting cultish behaviors. We need to remove the control of that system they created out of the cult's hands now. And the way to do that is to impose our faith upon the system that they created with us as surety. And remove our surety and our faith from those instruments that do not conform with the law that they're required to conform with. So on this Sunday, uh, if you want to do, if you feel, if you are a person who knows that something's wrong and can and sees something wrong and feels hopeless or, or um, as though you have no capacity to affect any change, you can, by clearly aligning your heart and your faith in opposition spiritually inside you from those constructs that that actually you know they operate in spirituality these are principalities upon high removed from physical world they need us to be stupid and to continue to convey our faith to the heresy we need to stop conveying our faith to the heresy and come back to the natural law and only imbibe our faith in those things.